So sorry about the disruption. My internet broke out. So we'll continue from where we stopped. I'm just gonna share my screen. Just one second. And back to the application. Okay, so I was explaining that this is where you run your generated program from. So let's take a very simple example. We put a very simple block here. And while we insert this and we refresh this, we can see the generated pseudo code here. Before you're able to run any generated block program on your robot, you need to know what your robot ID is. If not, you cannot run it. So let's take a very simple example to run Esther. let's see what happens. Um, sometimes because of network latency, it takes a few seconds for the robot to run. And we can see Esther move. Um, let's try to run the other robot, which is Joshua. Just one second. So whenever, while we're waiting for the other robot to respond, I really suspect that there is no internet connection on the other robots. Um, that's why it's not running the generated command, but we would get that sorted out within a second. Let me just be sure that it's connected to the internet. Okay, it's connected by the internet signal. It's pretty weak. Um, seven to six. I just want to be sure this is the ID for the robots. Yes, this should be the ID. So let me try running this one more time. Oh, that's very strange. Let's change parameters and try. So the other robot isn't coming on, I suspect, because it isn't connected to the internet, that is why it isn't coming on. But we're just gonna continue the demonstration with only Esther. So we've used a very simple drive block to understand how this interface works. So you can see the Python generated code from each block here. Once you do that, if this interface is open, you will need to refresh it so that the new program reflects here. You need to provide the robot ID, then click run. So let's move Esther back to where she was coming from. To move a robot backwards, you need to use a minus sign. So that's minus 40, that's for is speed, sorry, that's for a speed of, okay, good. My internet connection isn't so great, sorry. That, so that's for a speed of 
um, 40 meter per centimeter per second and for a time of 20 seconds, which is two seconds. So let's run this. And that isn't running also, so I let me just check my network connection. And that was Esther who just moved. I had issues with my network connection, which is um, one of the key considerations when you're using this platform with any robot, ensure that your internet connection is strong. Let's try it again. Let's generate this program. And that moves the robot forward. Okay, so that's for the drive block. So the drive block, you're moving the robot at a speed, which is in centimeter per second, and at a time, which is in decisecond. Decisecond, 20 is equal to two seconds, 50 is equal to five seconds. That's for the drive block to move. So let's take it back. To move it back, we use a minus here. We refresh our program and we run it. And that moves it back to the initial position we can see the robot going back the next was we're going to try some more blocks so the turn block so this is responsible for creating a turn action um, it's in the robot so we're going to see how this um, works so let's say i want to create 10 tons we're going to go 10 tons at the speed of 30 centimeter per seconds. And I'm going to run this on Esther. Let's see how it how Esther responds to the ton command. And that's Esther just turning there. Great. Now that is Esther turning. So if you want to turn the robot to the other direction, you can just use a minus sign here. But I'm going to leave Esther like this so I can quickly um, summarize the video. So that's a turn block. The next block is the obstacle avoidance block. Now this block wasn't implemented the generic way the other blocks have been implemented for this version, but in subsequent versions, it will be implemented the same way using the this sensor block, the LiDAR sensor block. But for now, what does this block do? So the first value it's used to describe the distance from the obstacle the robot needs to get to before it stops. The second, determines the robot speed, which is in centimeter per second. And the third one determines the robot speed, or oh, sorry, the, the, uh, the duration you want the robot to run. So we're just gonna try using this block to make the robot uh, avoid hitting the chair. So what I'm gonna do, we try to move the robot back some distance. So I'm gonna move, let's say at the speed of minus 30. I want to move the robot for, let's say, four seconds, that's 40. Okay, that's a program. Oh, 
Oh, I think my, yeah, that's a program and let me run it. And that's Kafka. Yep. So I'm going to use this other block to move Esther into, um, let's say I want to get Esther to run into, um, you know what? I want to get Esther to run into the chair. So let me just align Esther. I'm just going to get this robot. I'm just going to turn it off because I'm not using it for this demonstration. And that is Esther just aligned there. So I'm going to use this block. So let's say you need to st stop at a distance of one meter, which is 100 centimeter. Move for at a speed of um, 40 centimeter per second. And I want you to continue running for, let's say, 100, sec 100 deciseconds, which is 10 seconds. So let's see how this works with regards to the robot. Okay, and that's Esther moving. Yep, and it has sensed the obstacle just one meter and it's sensing the obstacle and that's Esther still moving. It has sent another obstacle. So that is how the obstacle avoidance block works. Now the last set of toolbox. So let me try to move Esther back into the video frame. So I'm gonna move, okay. I'm just gonna perform. Let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna turn Esther to face this direction and move. Huh? I don't know why I said her. Huh? So I'm going to do this for, let's say, on turn of um, six turns at that speed. Okay, then that's extra turning. Good. And I'm going to get Esther back in frame. So I'm just going to move Esther for a speed of, let's say, for a distance of, okay, for a speed of 30 centimeters per second and for a distance of, let's say, for three seconds. So, yeah, and I'm going to run this. And that's Esther coming back in frame. Great. So the last set of blocks are basically logic blocks. They are not independent blocks. They are dependent on other blocks. Um, if you can use if to compare to actions together. So if can be typically used with the LIDAR sensor. If the LIDAR sensor is active, do this. This other block can also be used uh, with other sensors when they are implemented. Um, this block, what happens within this block? This block always runs the program forever. It doesn't stop. And I don't think we want to do that just right now, but at your free time, when you have access to yours, but you can try it out. I'm just going to use this last one to demonstrate. So I'm going to do this to demonstrate, I'm going to use repeat. I want you to repeat this for just, uh, let's say, let's repeat this for, repeat this uh, four times. What should it repeat? I want it to um, perform a turn. Once it performs this turn, I want it to. I want the robot to drive for. Once it performs, I want the robot to drive for. Let's say. Drive for two seconds. So what's happening is do this command, run this um, command, 
do it for four times. So let's see. Good, and let's run this and see the output on the robots. So turn at a speed of 30 centimeter per second. Yeah, then drive. Good, he's done that. So it's completing the turn now, it's performing the drive. The first drive. Yeah, so because of what I'm seeing here on my screen right now, I think there's an error with the program because this only turns just the first set of block, but this would be corrected in other blocks. So let's try um taking the robot back so or let's let's do this just to show you so let's do this and use the stop block and see how it works so i'm going to move this back minus 30 for this so move back this then stop do it four times so let's see yep Stop. Move back again. Stop. We're going to do this for four times. Move back again. Stop. And the last time, move back again and stop. And that's all the action. So thank you for being a part of today's demonstration section. Um, feel free to send us an email at um, support at hwrobolab.jitechos.com.ng or visit us at um, the Rout Laboratory in Heratwat University, if you want to find out more. But subsequently, there will be more videos released and there will be more features added. See you.